Hello, hello, everybody. This is your girl, Abigail, here with your weekly goddess forecast. And for those of you who don't know me, just a quick intro. My name is Abigail Mensa Bonsu, and I am an intuitive quantum goddess coach. I work with women who are ready to identify the limitations or things that hold them back, clear, release, heal, dissolve it so that they can get the tools to create the life that they desire. So this week is very interesting because we're already pulling in energy um, from Halloween, right? Halloween, and we have Mercury retrograde on that same day. So I wanted to talk a little bit about especially the Mercury retrograde because that's been pretty intense. Mercury went into retrograde on Halloween um, in the sign of Scorpio. For those of you who don't know about the sign of Scorpio. It is a deep sign. It is a sign that pulls you deeper within yourself. So we know that Mercury retrograde has to really do about, well, the energy, how it acts is that it pulls you back, right? It kind of slows you down so that you can really pay attention to the things, in the, the particular things that you need to work on and um, kind of that, do it once and for all right? It's kind of like the stepping back before you move forward, right? And so I call it the cosmic siesta for that reason, because we're able to really take a step back and take our time looking through how far we've come, our goals, our intentions, what works, what didn't work, why didn't it work, and how we can make things better before we can begin going forward again. So it being in the sign of Scorpio with such intensity, passion, deep, deep work, We're being pulled into that inner sanctum to do this work with Mercury retrograde. Usually Mercury retrogrades energy because it's the energy of the mind, right? We're usually on this level. But with Scorpio, we're pulling that down, down deep into the soul. We're doing soul work at this time with this retrograde. And so if you have already been feeling that intensity, you're not alone. If you're already being called um, to pay attention to a certain area of your life, um, or I like to call it more like a pimp slap or a cosmic pimp slap, you know, you're not alone. A lot of people are um, doing this soul work, soul work. I, I like that better. I was going to say soul search, but it's more of a soul work. And so it is intense. It might be intense, not for everybody. But for those of you especially who are ready uh, or who have been standing at the brink of transformation or a big breakthrough, this will, this will definitely feel intense for you because this is your jump off. But this jump off is not like a jumping off and then a quick landing. You're actually taking your time landing on that foundation. Right. And so the, the, the key point here is that as you are in midair, right, you're using this time to pull in the tools, the wisdom, the knowledge, whatever you need to create or to support that new beginning for you. Right. And that's one of the energy that's really coming through with this Mercury retrograde being in the Scorpio is that new beginning, death and rebirth. Right, So we're letting go of the baggages, the limitations, the things that hold us back, um, the deeper trauma, the deep healing that we need to do. Um, we're, we're being pulled into um, the deeper heartbreaks that we need to heal, um, the heart baggages that we need to let go, all of that so that we can truly begin anew, a fresh, new um, outlook on life, right? There's a huge blessing here if you do the work, if you work with Mercury retrograde and Scorpio energy. So our goddesses this week, of course, come in to support us in such intense time. Mercury is in retrograde from, um, it went retrograde October 31st and it will be in retrograde till November 20th. So before Thanksgiving in the U.S. Um, And so we, we have some time here to do the work, right? So Three amazing goddesses came up to really work with us um, this week. And so let's go ahead and just begin. 
So we have Goddess Maya bringing in the wisdom of illusion. She's going to be talking to us about um, the illusions, the illusions that are within our lives, the illusions that we uh, are, that is our reality, right? What we need to step away from knowing what is an illusion and what is reality, um, what is um, temporary and what is your true soul path, right? And then Goddess Yuki Ona bringing in stillness. I feel like this center card, um, this center goddess or this goddess that appears in the centerpiece is really um, in connection with Mercury retrograde, really slowing things down. And then Scorpio going deeper into that stillness to find your answers. And then, of course, um, like I've, I talked about um, last month, last month, the, the main goddess that came in to work with us throughout the month was goddess Isis. In November, the main goddess that came in to work with us is goddess Kuan Yin. So I feel like this is such a beautiful um, energy to bring into the month of gratitude. November is all about gratitude. It's all about kind of reviewing how far you've come and then just being grateful for how far you've come, bringing in the energy of gratitude, which will catapult you to that next level of your amazingness, of your um, up-leveling, of your um, new life, right? And so I'm very grateful that Goddess Kuan Yin is really coming in for us at this time. So let's go ahead and begin with Goddess Maya. I love that name, by the way. Let's see here. Let's see what message she has for us. So the cool thing is that since we're in Mercury Retrograde, um, it's really cool that all the cards came in upright. So we didn't have any, um, you know, like the, well, where am I looking for? Oh my gosh, it's not coming in. We didn't have any reverse cards, which is really cool. Um, every time that happens, you usually tell me that we are doing the work or those people who are drawn to this message are doing the work, right? And it's like empowerment. It's like, keep going, you're doing great. So let's see the message for Goddess Maya. So she speaks, and remember, her wisdom is about illusion. When you look at the world, everything you see appears to be real. So it's easy to imagine that your current condition or conditions are influenced only by obvious actions and calculated movements. This is an illusion as everything is intrinsically connected. Though not visible to us due to the limitations imposed on our perception by our five senses. Hindu goddess of illusion, Maya, calls you to trust that the invisible world is responding to your deepest desires and intentions to make a better life for yourself and others. You are able to see through the the curtain of illusions. Your clarity and intuition is heightened as your next steps are sure-footed. When the goddess Maya chooses to help you, Trust that everything you need arises from the world with ease, right? Powerful message here. Um, and I'm getting that as you're listening to the message, there's uh, even another level of magic going on. Like I see her um, kind of removing that curtain of illusion from your senses, not just from your eyes, you know, from your ear. Um, let's see. Feeling, so the five senses, seeing, hearing, touch, feeling, right? She's removing that curtain of illusion from all five senses and also activating your extraordinary senses too. So receive that, taking a deep breath in and out. Beautiful. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next goddess, goddess Yuki Ona, bringing in the the wisdom of stillness. Um, This is the card that I was telling you is very much, it's connected to the energy of Mercury retrograde. So again, empowerment message. The Japanese goddess of winter, Yuki Ona, calls you to a practice of daily meditation and stillness to prepare you for greater productivity and results. Being open and receptive, slowing down and allowing for time to dream activates your partnership with the universe so you can truly set your intentions in motion. Then almost without effort, you discover the vibrational match in the world of form. 
just as the life force quietly builds within a seed buried under snow, so too will the energy build in the seed of your desires before manifesting with no effort on your part. You will find how easy it is to co-create while implementing the practice of stillness and receptivity. Let others make sure let others make the first move at this time as you assess and observe the world around you from the profound position of stillness and neutrality. In this way the world becomes intimate, yet you know to take nothing personally. I feel like this this part right here that I just read, um, let others make the first move at this time. Um and let's see here, what was the other one? Don't take anything personally. That is key for Mercury retrograde, especially being in Scorpio with all the triggers. Scorpio is a water sign. So we're very much deep in our emotions. We're in the emotional realm right now. So a lot of people are feeling this. A lot, there's a lot of people feeling that, um, feeling getting triggered. There are a lot of people triggering others. Um, we're just deep in that emotional realm. So this right here is gold. When the goddess Yuki Ona comes to support you, be still. This calls in the miracles. The action now is non-action. So here's the thing. That's the whole deal with Mercury retrograde, right? The reason why this energy comes in to slow you down so that you can think about things twice before you move through. Right. And so with this case, goddess Yuki Ona is really coming in to say, hey, at this time, I need you to dive deep. Allow Scorpio to take you deeper into your being. And I need you to do the inner work by visioning, which is the meditation part, by visualizing and visioning what you would like to create and experience and manifest. Create Call whatever it is that you would like to create in the physical first, in the internal realm. And then through that, you begin to carry that frequency, which will begin to draw in anything that is in alignment with that frequency that you have embodied to support you. So you begin to see that things fall into place naturally with ease and grace, right? That's what we want. So make sure you you take some time this month, if you can, to really dive deep in. If you uh, if you already have a meditation practice, keep that going. If you have it and you're kind of like wishy washy about it, this is a great time to um, recommit to it. The veil is very thin around this time, so meditation is more potent and more powerful and clearer, right? Crystal clear. Um, so it's a great way to do this. If you've never done meditation before, look into it. Start a simple practice that will get you um, deeper within yourself. You can always subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have loads of meditations that can really get you started. So now let's jump into our um, the last card, which is Goddess Kuan Yin. And um, the card says, the eight immortals. So let's see what she has in store for us. All right. Here's the message. The message you have been receiving that are unconditionally loving, fearless, and encouraging of you to grow and be true to yourself are from your higher guidance. The eight immortals and other beings of divine light and divine love are guiding you. It is safe to follow these messages now. Doing so will bring you greater joy. Sometimes you may question whether you are in contact with genuine spiritual guidance or engaging in wishful thinking. Genuine guidance is simple, clear, and repetitive. Genuine guidance is simple, clear, and repetitive. When you ask for confirmation, it will come. The more open you are, the more quickly the confirmation can reach you in the form of signs, conversations, and serendipitous happenings. In fact, confirmation and guidance can be instantaneous and from, the, and from multiple con- unconnected sources. 
like the universe is playing a joyful, loving game with you. The guidance will be uplifting and helpful. Sometimes it will also ask you to take a step that feels challenging. And yet true guidance always proves itself in that it only asks of you what is right and just for your highest good. It always serves the highest good of all involved in any situation, no matter what our fears might be. It is good to be careful and discerning about the quality of guidance that you are seeking. That is usually an easy task to identify when guidance is not of a higher vibrational variety. It will be judging of of you or others, it will not feel right. Even if genuine guidance feels like it is asking you to do something unexpected or something that feels like real stretch for you, it will still feel right in your own heart to do so. Genuine guidance, even when challenging, brings a sense sense of righteousness and peace into your heart. Whereas lower vibrational guidance, all thoughts, all wishful thinking, doesn't bring you into deeper pace. It simply confuses and confirms judgment. It isn't nearly as helpful. So sift through your thoughts and feelings to come to that genuine guidance and true spiritual knowing within you now. You can call upon the eight immortals and any being that loves you unconditionally and trust that you will receive quality guidance. The process below, or the process I'm about to walk you guys through, will help you to be still and connect with it through your own hearts, beloved, which contains great wisdom and peace to guide you. Thank you, Goddess Kuan Yin, for this message. So with that, let's just go ahead and dive right into the practice so go ahead and take a pen and a paper and a paper or your journal and write a letter to your higher guidance that loves you unconditionally and let them know what you need guidance on or what guidance you need confirmed or revised write the letter and read it out loud then seal it up and place it in a sacred space perhaps in your journal or with a crystal on top in your bedroom or meditation space. Close your eyes and visualize eight beams of unconditional divine love all around you. Now repeat after me. I call upon those beings that love me unconditionally to assist me in providing clear helpful, and unconditionally loving and true higher guidance in answer to my question. Thank you, beloveds. Namaste. Let it go. And then come back and reread in two weeks' time to see if your question has already been answered through your life experiences to that date. If not, read the letter again and ask to be shown the answers in a way that serves your highest good by repeating the visualization and requesting if necessary. And here's the prayer of the eight immortals. Go ahead and close your eyes. (sighs) Just imagine those eight highest guides surrounding you and receive this prayer place your left hand on your heart I call upon the eight immortals that love me unconditionally and shine the light of peace and spiritual power upon me now you understand that no matter what happens in life There are blessings underneath it. Please help me find my clarity, wisdom, guidance, and truths to reveal the blessings and grow now. 
Namaste. Thank you for your help. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. So be it and so it is. I'm going to speak a little bit about this beautiful mantra that um, Goddess Kuan Yin has blessed us with. This will be a perfect mantra to use during this um, Mercury retrograde. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about what this mantra means to kind of break it down for you. So according to the Dalai Lama, um, the mantra Om Mani Padme Hom has the power to transform your impure body speech and mind into the pure body speech and mind of a buddha so in this case like you know if you don't resonate with buddha it will be your higher self your higher consciousness um your higher guidance whatever you call the highest aspect of yourself so the word or the sound om the sound om um is known to be is called the the primordial sound of all creation. So just by chanting om by itself, you can feel that it's very grounding, right? Kind of takes you takes you your roots deep into Mother Earth and just grounds you in that divine mother's um, energy. Mane um, is associated with dissolving jealousy and the attachment to fleeting pleasures. Padme um, is is known to well. What it does is that it dissolves um, our attachments to the many prejudice prejudices and judgmental notions we have while cultivating the quality of perser- perseverance. And it helps you dissolve attachments to being possessive. Ooh, I feel like all of this is like connected to Mercury retrograde and what went in Scorpio and the energy that is um, that is um, taking it effect. So together, Padme means lotus and represents wisdom. And home. Is the unshakable or represents the unshakable and the unmovable. So Om Mani Padme Home, to just kind of simplify it, it means the jewel is in the lotus. And the lotus represents your heart. Remember, I was talking about um, Scorpio energy, Mercury retrograde. Mercury is like the mind. Scorpio is like the heart. It's a connection between the mind and the heart. Um, Really diving deep into your heart to find the wisdom there. Working through the portal, um, the activated portal of your heart to work with your higher guidance, with your masters of light, with your archangelic self, with your higher self. So if this, if you... Oh, yeah, that's where I was going with this. See, it all kind of came together beautifully. If you're looking for a way to start a meditation, simply just closing your eyes, taking some deep breaths in, or even listening to music um, or listening to the uh, music where they chant in this um, mantra, this beautiful, powerful mantra, you know, that itself would do so much good for you this, this month through this powerful, intense Mercury Retrograde period right so just listening or repeating it yourself oh money my own money pot may home oh money pot may home oh money pot may home right the jewel is in the lotus the jewel is in the lotus the jewel is in the lotus oh money pot may home and breathe in that wisdom into your being into your heart as you repeat the mantra envision that lotus within your heart blossom and begin to glow and become vibrant and infuse every part of your body right 
powerful practice you can do. So simple meditation practice you can do right there. All right, my loves. Thank you again for receiving this um, goddess forecast. Um, and if you have any questions about anything that I said, you can always find me on Facebook. Um, you can always join my my free Facebook group, Moon Goddess Sacred Sanctum. Um, you can also send me a message. Um, but otherwise, enjoy and so much blessings to you this week. Oh.